Hey everyone, so today I'm going to go over the documentation for the 2000 Cobra R Mustang. Whether you're an enthusiast or a potential buyer, the car came with quite a bit of documentation, more than your standard Mustang or even more than your standard Mustang Cobra came with. There really is no one specific place that outlines all this documentation. So I just want to go over this for potential buyers. It took me a long time to kind of piece all this information together before I purchased my car to kind of know what to look for, for what was important and what stuff was irreplaceable and R specific. So I'll go over everything one by one. We'll talk about what stuff you can find and what stuff is irreplaceable. Uh, car came with your standard Mustang uh, owner's guide and maintenance schedule. Again, this is standard Mustang stuff, nothing specific. You can find it on eBay, go to a Ford dealer and get it. Not a big deal to find if the car's missing. It's same thing with this uh, roadside assistance guide card. Uh, it was standard with all Ford vehicles. It's not our specific, so it's not a big deal if you don't have it. The car came with uh, two sets of keys with key fobs. They are your normal Ford uh, computer controlled keys that have to be programmed. Uh, also with two fobs, lock, unlock, a trunk release, and a panic button. They're just standard Ford keys. They're not Cobra R specific. All right, the window sticker for the car. This is something that is not replaceable. If the vehicle is missing this, you cannot get it. Ford does not make duplicates. They don't make extras. If the car is missing it, you can't get a new one. So just keep that in mind if that's important to you if you're going to buy a car and you want something that's original with all its original paperwork. Uh, all the cars were the same when they left the factory, same color, same options, only difference obviously being the VIN number per car. All the window stickers were the same with the exception of five Canada cars. Five cars were designated for Canada. The window sticker looked a little bit different. It had the units in metric and the pricing was a little bit different. Also on the Canada cars, the vehicles were not street legal. Ford didn't make the necessary changes to make them legal for Canadian roads. So there's also a sticker on the door frame, I believe it is, that states that the cars are for off-road tr uh, off track use only. All right, moving on into stuff that was specific to the Cobra R that came with the car when it was new. Uh, information, uh, pamphlet on how to take the splitter on and off correctly along with some scuff pads so that the splitter didn't scuff the bumper when it was on the vehicle came with a guide for the tires it came with the uh, Cobra R specific uh, B of Goodrich KD tires pamphlet for the springs that came with the car along with a cleaning instruction sheet for the k and airfield this is all R specific I personally don't think it adds or subtracts a ton of value if you don't have it with the car. This stuff you can find on eBay every now and again, not a huge deal. Same thing with this group of stickers. These are all the manufacturers that were involved with Ford with the development of the car. They're just a, a pack of stickers that the car came with. Uh, again, I don't think this is a big deal. I don't think it adds or subtracts a ton of value if it is missing by chance. This is what is known as the Cobra R uh, postcard. It's been known amongst owners. What this basically is, it came with the car when you bought it new from the dealer. It basically says that the black binder that the car came with was not yet available when the car was sold. So in order to get the binder, you had to contact SVT. You have to give them a copy of your registration showing that you do own the car, and they would send it to you. As of 2017, there are about six binders that are unclaimed. So if you are looking for a Cobra R and you want to have the documentation with the car and it's missing the binder call svt give them the last six digits of the vin and they will confirm whether or not they do or do not have it uh, but it's just a good way to uh, place to start if the binder is missing because the binder alone adds can add or subtract a lot of value to the car depending on if you're looking for an uh, original authentic car or if maybe you're looking for a race car that's not as important to you uh, the car also came with this 2000 Cobra R Supplement Owner's Guide. It's a sort of general overview on the car. It's nothing too specific. Uh, it has all the vendors on the sides that were involved in the car. Just talks about all the aspects of the car generally, just to give owners an idea. Uh, the various parts, sizes of the, everything from the brakes to the tires. Uh, has instructions on here how to, uh, where the air filter is, how to clean it. Also in the back has some uh, capacities and uh, types of fluid that the car uses. This is specific to the car. This isn't too hard to find if you cannot find it, uh, if the car doesn't have it rather. You can usually find them on eBay for about $100. It's not a big deal if it's missing. Uh, this I've never seen for sale. It's a great thing to have, but if it's missing, I don't think it's a huge 
uh, deal if it's missing to the car again that's a personal opinion that's something that's a decision you need to make by far the most valuable aspect of all this documentation is the cobra r binder these are irreplaceable ford made one for every car that's it there are no extras made uh, they were specific to the car there's a couple items in them that are, uh, have the vehicle number and the vehicle vin number uh, in here i'll go over this uh, individually these binders I've uh, heard about them, I've never seen one, but I've heard on eBay they've gone for over $1,000. Uh, and the empty binders themselves with nothing in them at all, I've seen for go for between three and $500. However, certain people I've heard from other uh, our, uh, owners have made fakes of these because they're starting to get so expensive. So I'll just go over uh, every aspect of this. The R symbol on the front. Ford special vehicle team on the side and on the back, on the lower portion, you have a Ford symbol. Uh, it has uh, these leaflets on the side uh, as dividers for all different sections. I'll go over them individually. When you open it up, the center section is all black. The clamps are all black. And it also has this plastic piece which holds the dash plaque. The dash plaque is VIN specific, or vehicle specific rather. VIN number, build number. SVT symbol, Ford symbol, R symbol. If you lose it, you cannot get another one. That's it. They made one per car, and that's it. Opening the first tab is the welcome letter. Similar to the thank you letter that came with all SVT vehicles. Um, just congratulated owners on the purchase of the car. Some general information. Talked about, you know, track use, certificate of authenticity. Just some basic information on the car. The binder came with a copy of SVT Enthusiast. I talked about the development of the car. That, uh, they interviewed some of the engineers in there. Jay Leno's in there. Uh, just a good uh, general overview on the car. The certificate of authenticity. This certificate of authenticity is specific to the 2000 Cobra R. This all white with the R in the center with sort of a holographic almost uh, snake symbol. If the car doesn't have this, this is irreplaceable. Now, if you see a Cobra R for sale with a certificate of authenticity and it has a blue border on it, what that is, is f that is from Ford. However, Ford what Ford calls those second generation certificates of authenticity. They are from Ford, but they're not the original ones the car came with. Basically, you, you can buy them from Ford as secondaries if you lose this original one. But again, this is the original one that the car came with in the binder and it is irreplaceable. They do not make extras if it's missing. Next is the performance uh, documentation in the car. This is the same performance documentation that came in the uh, press kit. If you ever seen one of those, usually three to four hundred dollars. You can find them on eBay. It's very similar to this. Um, basic performance information on the car. Uh, some of the dimensions, a dyno chart, braking comparison tests. Uh, talks about the bushing comparison, the front and rear damper comparison. Uh, next tab is the specific, uh, the special vehicle engineering team. This is all the main engineers that were involved in the car. It's just who they were, um, what responsibilities they had for the car. Talks about their first cars and just some general information on uh, each one of the main engineers involved with the car. This is specific to the binder only. This was not in the press kit. The photographs. These photographs are irreplaceable. They are specific to the binder. They're all the same, though. They're not specific to each individual car. These are, I've never seen a set of these for sale, and a way to tell that they are original. They have this Kodak professional digital paper symbol on the back. I've heard rumors that guys have made these and tried to pass them off as originals, but this is the only way to really tell that they are original. Again, if you're missing, they should be in the binder, but if you are missing them, they are basically irreplaceable. They didn't make extras. They weren't available through Ford other than in the binder. Every one at the bottom has uh, some basic information as to the, uh, the picture itself. Again, this is the car going down, all the cars going down the assembly line, being built. And when 
the cars left Dearborn. They didn't have hoods. They didn't have the wings on them. They didn't have the splitter. They didn't have the side exhaust so that they could be uh, safely loaded onto transporters. And they were sent to MSX or Roush for final assembly. And there's the last tab, some press information. This is also information that was in the uh, press kit picture. Um, talks about the development of the car, along with the engine, the, all the manufacturers that were involved with the car, all the different uh, extra body parts they put on it, things like that. Uh, some of the, if you notice, you've seen some of the pictures in the binder before. Some of the pictures were also used in this book, this powered by SVT book. Some of the same pictures were used. Uh, when they talked about the Cobra R. Now, fortunately, I was very lucky when I purchased my car. Uh, I bought it from the original owner who worked for Ford at the time. He had worked there for a very long time. He had access to the Dearborn assembly plant when the car was being manufactured. Uh, and one of the big selling points for the car for me was the extensive documentation he had. He had all the standard Cobra stuff, also with some stuff that is extremely rare. Pictured here in every Cobra R binder picture, this is the factory build sheet and the factory checklists i was very fortunate enough he held on to all this paperwork this is the factory build sheet and checklist for my car with my vin number on it this stuff is almost impossible to get i've heard rumors of a couple guys have these i've never seen this other uh checklist before uh, they put it on the car but they really didn't save it for the owners when the cars got to the dealer I have two status inquiry sheets from the car from the internal Ford computer with my vehicle's VIN number on it, uh, along with the build sequencing sheet. It had the dates of where it went to all the various uh, other facilities like Roush and MSX, the VIN number, vehicle number, rotation number, uh, the engine serial number, along with the final uh, date of manufacture, copies of the original bill of sale. Uh, letter hand signed letter from the original owner explaining how he ended up uh, getting the car and what steps he had to go through to get it both recall notices for the car car two recall notices the rear knuckles and the parking brake controller along with the sheet that came on the Recaro seats also seen here in the binder along with information how to uh, attach the brake ducts. Also, if you uh, like to collect information on the car, if you go on eBay, you can usually find some other uh, interesting items for the car. Uh, advertisers that the various uh, manufacturers used when the car was developed. These are basically ads that were seen in magazines. Uh, there was some other paperwork that some cars had. It was basically uh, paperwork that was between SVT and the dealers themselves. Uh, they look very similar to something like this. It'll have the SVT symbol in the top corner on a white piece of paper. It's things like what's called the uh, acceptance or lottery letter has been come to uh, be known as. It's basically a letter to the dealer saying that they were accepted since they're at the time the car was made. There was uh, 600 SVT dealers and 300 cars so only about half the dealers got them so they got a letter from SVT saying congratulations you were chosen to get one car so there are some cars that have uh, the letters for like that I think there was a couple other letters between the dealers and SVT also a cool thing to have you can't get those if uh, if you don't have it there was just letters uh, back and forth between the dealer and the factory um, so this is basically a good general overview of the documentation uh, the, uh, the important stuff to have uh, this is pretty much everything the car came with. By far, the biggest thing as far as uh, documentation and value for the car is the binder. These binders are irreplaceable. They made one per car. That is it. If you're missing this, you cannot get more. You can't contact SVT. You can't contact Ford. They don't have them, period. If they're gone, you can maybe try tracking down the original owner and seeing if they're there. Uh, but other than that, you, just, you can't get them. There's vehicle-specific stuff in there, and there were no extras. Also, the window sticker. That's another very valuable piece. Ford didn't make extras. The car came with one. If you got lost or damaged, destroyed, that's it. It's gone. You, they don't make extra copies or keep more on file. So, by far, the black binder and the window sticker add a lot of value to the car. Some of this other stuff I think is great to have. If you have it, awesome. Um, but you can track down some of this stuff. It might take, you, take some time to get it. Um, as far as a lot of that factory stuff I had for the car, if you have that, that's great. But that stuff is super, super rare. Um, really only guys that had access to the factory floor um, were able to get that stuff. I've heard that the build sheet that on the first page I showed you, 
sometimes guys will find them behind the bumpers. If you're looking at Cobra Arm, it might not be a bad idea to check behind the, the front bumper. Sometimes they, they sandwich them in there from the factory. But um, other than that, that other stuff you really can't get. They didn't save them for the owners. So also be going over a buyer's guide for the car. I'll be talking about the issues with the car, some quirks and some things that most people haven't seen uh, in the various videos that may be on the internet for the cars. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.